Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Abhi Bothagur, and hello to Hasu, Munabi, and Abhi Balu, my son and daughters, and any of my family members, immediate family members, and the citizens of the world. I am neither a media person nor an expert on financial or geopolitical matter. I am an engineer, and who needs to go to work to bring food to the table? If I do not work, I do not get paid. After much waiting, I finally have one of my favorite person, Mr. Jim Willie. He needs no introduction, as you can find him on GoldenJackass.com. I've been watch, I've been listening to Mr. Willie for a long time, but the day I heard him speaking a very loud voice, this is what he said: "Dollars gonna rise high, and then it dies." That's the day I decided to have a conversation with him. Uh, the reason I'm doing it for my future generation, see as how history unfolds. And today, and I'm looking right now, as I can see on the FX tab, the dollars have crossed 90.15. So... I'll have Jim handle after that. Go ahead, Jim. It's, it's interesting that the dollar is rising, and it's perceived as evidence of strength. I contend the opposite, that the entire system that's dollar-based, by that I mean trade is settled between two countries when they buy commodities or sell finished products, it's settled in dollars, <clears throat> but also big banks across the world have their reserves set up in dollar-based securities, namely U.S. Treasury bonds. The dollar is not rising from strength. It's rising because the entire system is breaking. <clears throat> We're experiencing systemic failure right now. The whole financial structures, all the platforms are collapsing. And the evidence of that is all this money seeking dollar safe haven because everything is breaking. Well, that doesn't mean it's strong. It means its system is breaking. We're, we're actually seeing a, a phenomenon happen that, that I forecasted a couple of years ago. I said, you'll know we are at the very end of the dollar's reign as king, king dollar, when the dollar rises, rises, then rises some more right before it dies. And we're seeing that right now. For the last month or so, we have been in the end game. This is the end of the dollar. The, the U.S. has resisted mightily the reset, the global currency reset, which is really quite a funny name because... What they're planning to do, the whole world that is, and the United States is getting in the way, they're planning to reset the currencies, not, you know, for the, the very minor currencies and having them adjusted properly versus the major currencies. No, this is a, uh, an adjustment of the major currencies uh, where they get cut in half versus gold. What I'm trying to say is the currency reset is for a return of the gold standard, and to double the gold price, like overnight. And the United States is resisting it, even though 140 nations agreed to it about a year ago now. And by defying the agreement with these 100 and something, 140 nations, signatories to the global currency reset, the United States decided, well, we've got a different plan. We don't want to reset the currencies versus gold. We're going to give you a Ukraine war. We're going to sever the umbilical cord between Russia and Europe. We're going to screw you up. So now we have, sadly, the United States acting as a rogue nation, using war to defend the dollar, and it's just not going to work. Um, it, it, we're going to see the end of the dollar. It, it's really just a matter of a few months, several weeks. It's very hard to say, but uh, this is the end. You bet. Well, like you're talking about a gold, 
Now, my first question I was asking is uh, when I, I Rob Kirby, I, I am a subscriber to Rob Kirby. Rob Kirby is my friend. And uh, about a year ago, last year, and he was talking with uh, uh, USA Watchdog, uh, Greg Hunter. And this is what he said. It's going to die when China don't get their gold. That's what Rob Kirby said. Now, my question is that what is a right or wrong about that statement? It's a very simple way of, of phrasing it, and it, it's cute and it's catchy. And, and Rob is a, a good friend and colleague of mine. But, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to encapsulate the entire fuse or fracture line for this system because we're dealing with all major financial platforms and banking platforms fracturing simultaneously. Now, what Rob is saying is the breakdown of the entire system is very likely to happen when gold is repriced much higher, and that is going to happen when China can no longer take advantage of this artificially low gold price and capture more and more tonnage of gold. And I tend to agree, <clears throat> but we don't know whether the rest of the systems are going to break down and collapse like sovereign bonds. I mean, do you know for sure that a month from now, the U.S. Treasury complex is going to remain floating with all the derivative buttresses, I call them, the interest rate swap derivatives that 99% of Americans have no idea about. It's very hard to say. I, I, to be sure, a major crack, fault line, is uh, the gold market. But there are other major fault lines, and that is the U.S. Treasury bonds. If, if foreign nations, the big movement right now, I mean, this is just a colossal movement, is for other nations to settle their trade outside the dollar. Russia and China have this big holy grail um, energy deal that's going to, you know, span 30 years and cover $400 billion. But they've got a number of other projects that are more immediate like extending pipelines from Siberia into western China, not the Pacific coast of China, but the western side of China. You've got lots and lots of other nations. I mean, just last week, <clears throat> there was a deal between Brazil and Uruguay. They agreed they weren't going to use the dollar to settle their trade anymore. And then you've got all these maybe 25 uh, Chinese yuan swap facilities, like between uh, China and Brazil, between China and England, between China and Germany, between China and Australia. They're not settling in U.S. dollars for trade. So my point is, if more momentum accelerate, if that's not correct, more uh, momentum develops in trade settlement outside the dollar, we're going to see nations conclude we don't need to hold our treasury bonds anymore. They're cluttering up our banking system. They're subject to QE and the hyper-monetary inflation cancer, as I call it. And they don't want the dollar risk. They won't want the dollar risk. So they're going to start dumping their treasury bonds. And that's not an event that's going to cause a crack in the gold market, but it is an event that's going to force the hand of the Federal Reserve, where they've already given hints in the last week, well, it looks like QE3 is not really done. They're going to continue to buy more bonds. Why? Because the U.S. government continues to make trillion-dollar deficits, because foreign nations are not buying treasury bonds to cover and finance the debt, and because foreign nations are dumping their treasury bonds because they're not settling in dollars anymore. So Rob believes the fault line is going to be gold, and he might be right. And the voice has told me we're going to wake up one day. It might happen sometime around Chinese New Year, give or take a month or so or two or three, 
Chinese New Year is mid-February. The yes. boys think we're going to wake up someday and find the gold price is twice, twice the price. And the silver price is three times the price. So, <coughs> pardon me, if, if the United States says we're going to defy your global currency reset, it's very possible that the world is going to say, well, screw you, we're going to double the gold price and totally throw grenades into your banking system as retaliation. And how would that work? Well, if the gold price is suddenly 2600 and the silver price is suddenly $50, all the Forex derivatives tied to gold blow up. So all the New York, London, and Western European banks go into failure hmm. unless the central banks monetize all those derivatives. But what would that cause? That would cause all the global major currencies to have lost, client, um, lost confidence. There'd be no confidence at all in the entire Forex currency system led by the dollar, but which include the pound sterling, the Swiss franc, the euro, the yen. All these currencies would go into the toilet from the confidence side. So <clears throat> if the Forex is the site of the grenades, and we see all the different major currencies repriced versus gold. In other words, gold doubles in price. I love the way they say currencies are repriced versus gold, reset. No, if they're saying that the gold standard is going to come back, the gold price is going to double, and then in the following year, double again, and it's going to blow up the Western Bank. So by having the Ukraine war and defying the global currency reset, the United States has invited the world, go ahead, blow up our banks, see if you can do it by means of the gold price. Because, hey, I got news for people who, who like, like absolute nitwits, are mesmerized by the COMEX gold price. There's no gold delivered on gold futures contracts and has not been delivered since June of 2012. That's two and a half years. We're talking 30 months of no gold delivery on a gold contract, which is a contract violation. That is a felony. But the COMEX tells the people, the parties, well, if you pursue this, you'll never be invited inside the door again. You won't be able to conduct <coughs> pardon me, any contracts in crude oil. <coughs> you won't be able to do any contracts in cotton. You won't be able to do any contracts in anything. So there's no lawsuits hmm. against the COMEX for their contract violation. Hmm. No, we're, Rob Kirby might be right, but, you know, if it's not gold on one side, it's the treasury bonds on the other and Forex on the side and the banks holding them all up. So it's going to be simultaneous, this breakdown. All systems are going to break simultaneously, and they're breaking down right now, evidence being the rising dollar. Yes. You know, uh, just a quick, quick two observations that came uh, to my life in the last few days. I went to a court, a municipal court, and I know how this, this, this law, this law, the lie, there is no rule of law in this country, all right? And everything that they're doing is... For them, not for you. I found a person was standing, on, uh, sitting next to me. He's an older guy. He's probably 50 plus, And he had a DWI. So he decided that uh, rather than going through all this pain and hiring attorneys and all these things, he decided, all right, let me say, yes, I did that. Uh, I, found, I, I plead guilty. You take my license. You suspend it for six months, a year. I paid a fine. I go home. And he said, I am guilty. The judge said, no, 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 come here, come here, come here. I'll give you, I'll give you, um, you know, a form, fill up this thing, get a, uh, you know, a public defender. You go through the whole process. And he coerced, coerced him to go take that paper and plead not guilty and go home. Why? Because he knows that once he started doing go through the process, they can milk more money from him. This is what is going on. All right. And another day, I was, uh, you know, I used to go, my children, I used to go uh, to those uh, conferences. 
and I was sitting there with a lot of other, uh, you know, uh, you know, mother, father, parents going there, and I was sitting there and I'm watching all across myself. All right, I've seen few women sitting there, and I and I looked at them and I thought myself, you know what? If I close the door, that go, going out, and I ask anyone, do you have any valuable with you to get out the door? Show me. To be honest with you, rather other than a small little, uh, you know, <laughs> solitaire ring, these people have nothing of value on their body. I feel so bad about it. I talk to my student every day in and out, get some real valuable stuff, and they don't get it. And this is going to hurt these people very badly. And I'm trying to tell, and then nobody's listening. Now, coming back uh, to my second question, is about the U.S. Treasury. China's holding U.S. Treasury has not fallen, but not a lot. Why it's not fallen? They have been, you know, uh, financing all this stuff in uh, Africa and where not. How they are paying? I don't know. I mean, are are they with the same kind of cabal that against the working against the humanity? What's your thought? Well, before I get to that, just so I can make a quick comment about the uh, people not having much in the way of wealth and being sustained in order to continue paying. Um, the cancer treatments, I'll get to the Treasury question in a minute. Give me, give me two minutes here. The cancer treatment in the United States is not toward a remedy. It's toward sustaining the victim for several years in order to milk tens of thousands of dollars out of insurance companies and the people for treatment and drugs, yes. pharmaceutical products. Yes. If they want a cancer cure, <clears throat> go to a Columbia hospital in, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of the capital of Columbia right now, not Caracas. Um, oh shoot, can't think of the capital of, uh, of Columbia right now. Um, it's not Medellin. Anyway, they've got 40 day cures. Hmm. 40 days and you're done with the cancer. It's, it's a targeted metabolism uh, cure. They slow down the metabolism. You know, another thing is the police thefts in the United States have gone out of control. The police stop you, they confiscate some property, they might empty your wallet, and the people are told, okay, you can go home now. F you. And there's very little recourse that can be done. Uh, <clears throat> there are also bank confiscations bail-ins. You also have health care hikes. Uh, what do you get for the, the health care hike? Well, I don't know. Why did it go up? Well, I don't know. It just goes up. Everything's going up. People have lost their home equity. Their, their home prices have gone down markedly. And we don't look at Wall Street as saying, oh, you stole my home equity. But what is it if they had two, three, five trillion dollars worth of bond fraud from mortgage-backed security? These are thefts. <clears throat> So anyway, I, I, I like to make the point that, uh, you know, we, we don't have uh, a normal situation here. And, and the, the, the thefts, that they go on and on and on. Okay, the capital of Colombia is Bogota. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. But, uh, I, have a, I have a client, not a client, I, he's a contact. He's a great guy. He's a strange fellow, but he's a nice guy. And he tells me... Uh, I've taken maybe 30 American citizens down to Bogota, to the hospitals, and we have these 40-day cancer cures where they, you know, if you get cancer of the liver, they target the liver and slow down the metabolism of the liver. They get the growth that's gone out of control to slow down, and 40 days later, you get a cure. They don't like that in the United States. Hmm. So there's something called, uh, oh gosh, SEAC T that will reduce your prostate. SEAC T. It'll also get rid of the cancer in your prostate. SEAC T. E S S A I C T. Well, gosh, one of the leading proponents in the in Washington State was uh, a lady who maintained a private library. Was not online. It was all kinds of cancer cures and natural things. She went down to the Amazon frequently. Soon as she died, mysteriously, her whole home and library went. Burning to the ground. Mm. Okay, this is this is the way the U.S. pharmaceutical industry works. All right, to your question about U.S. Treasuries, 
<clears throat> are they really being used on a widespread basis? You bet they are. It's called indirect exchange. There was a deal a little over a year ago where British Petroleum sold its stake to TK something or other in, what, in, uh, in Russia. TKE Energy, a, a big oil company, I think they're number three oil company or number four oil, oil company in Russia. <clears throat> Rosneft bought it. Rosneft bought the TKE stake owned by British Petroleum for $53 billion. Russia paid in treasury bonds. And, and where does it all go? Well, it goes into the market and gets dumped. Well, if $53 billion is dumped in the course of three months by a Russian entity, who bought it up? It's the Federal Reserve. They're buying up lots and lots of Treasury bonds being dumped all over the market, the bond market, <clears throat> and they're not telling us about it. They're admitting covering the U.S. government debt. They're admitting the rollover of the U.S. government debt, but they don't admit on anything on derivatives, and they don't admit on anything for indirect exchange, which is asset purchases done by China. I'd like to point out the Chinese uh, asset purchases, whether it's a port, another port in Australia. They own all the ports in Australia. They own all the ports in Los Angeles. They own all the ports in British Columbia. They own all the ports in Mexico. They own a major port that they helped build in, in Brazil. <clears throat> if you take a look at all the different ports and, and railroad deals in Africa and, and big, uh, let's say, mine properties in Africa that they purchase or energy fields in Africa that they purchase, add them all up for a single year, and it comes to maybe eight, ten, twelve billion dollars. <laughs> that's that's less than what they used to buy every single stinking month. So the asset purchases by China are relatively tiny in the grand scheme of things. The Chinese are doing something extraordinarily clever and right under the U.S. bankers' noses. They put a billion dollars in Wells Fargo Bank in California, and they get to borrow eight to ten billion against it. And with that clean money, with the <clears throat> pristine collateral of treasury bonds, they're able to buy $10 billion worth of property, commercial property. The U.S. government doesn't like it, but what are they going to say? Hey, Wells Fargo, don't accept treasury bonds as collateral. I mean, this is where it's all breaking down. The Chinese, I believe, have lied that they own $1.3 trillion in treasury bonds. I think they own substantially less, but it's nowhere near zero. If I had to put a guess on it, I'd say they own $800 billion, $850 billion of treasury bonds, not $1.3. And who lies on the other side? It's the Saudis and the Gulf Emirates. I did a calculation last June or so, May. There was a big news item that came out and said that the Saudis were going to open it an independent sovereign wealth fund that, that acted apart from their central bank. And then I heard, well, gee, this came from The Voice, and I believe The Voice was instrumental in helping them to design and implement it. They're going to use the sovereign wealth fund to convert treasury bonds to hard assets. In other words, gold. The Saudis have set up a sovereign wealth fund to dump their treasuries and buy gold. And I asked them, are the other Gulf Emirates like the like Abu Dhabi and Dubai and you know, Oman, Kuwait, uh, are they all going to follow suit? And, and I heard, well, they might actually use the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund and their office, see how it goes, and maybe create their own. So then I did a little private exercise. This is you know, getting at the point of who owns how much treasury bond. I added up all the Gulf Emirate Sovereign Wealth Funds, and I came up with $2.3 trillion dollars. And we all know the Saudis have been recycling, and so have the Gulf Emirate states, been recycling their oil surpluses for 50 years. Treasury bonds and other instruments like, say, Citigroup stock, other Wall Street bank stock, maybe some Western European bank stock, London bank stock like Barclays. Pardon the noise here, but I live near an avenue, and there's uh, yeah, a lot okay. of buses, trucks, and sirens. So, of the two point two or three trillion dollars of Gulf Emirate 
sovereign wealth funds. How much do you think is dollar denominated? Well, I say about two thirds, maybe even more. So the Gulf Emirates might have, say, 1.6 to 1.8 trillion dollars worth of treasury bonds. You can add up all their New York stocks, bank stocks, and bonds, bonds for the stocks like Citigroup, and I don't think it adds up to more than you know six, eight, ten, fifteen billion dollars. I just don't think it adds up to a great deal. Gets a lot of publicity from Prince Alaweed, who I like to call Prince Dickweed. So the Chinese, I think, lie and, and let the Americans think that they own more treasury bonds than they do. They say. The official number is 1.3 trillion. I think it's about 800 billion. And the Saudis don't talk much at all about their treasuries. And I think they own uh, uh, probably with the other Emirates in the Gulf, close to around one and three quarters trillion dollars. So that's a lot of treasury bonds. They're going to get converted into gold because what what are they going to do? with all this toxic paper. Well, they're going to want something tangible, and they're going to want something for their banking systems that is, you know, not toxic. And why would any nation want to store treasury bonds when the United States and the Federal Reserve are printing them? This is what, this is what third world nations do. We criticize Zimbabwe as having a currency that's goofy, undermined by printing, that's exactly what we're doing in the United States. So, the QE, which I call QE to infinity, QE3 is not over. I don't believe it for a minute. Not a New York minute. New York minute, by the way, is defined about as about a second or two. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, we're acting like a third world nation and we're forcing the whole world to abandon the dollar in trade and it's going to force their hand in their reserve system for their banks. Most Americans are not even aware of what the currency role is of the dollar across the world, and they're even less aware of how the banks across the world, like South Korea, Japan, France, England, they hold treasury bonds as reserves. They're going to dump them. Mm. This is how we get the end of the king dollar. This is how you get the end of the global reserve currency privilege that Valérie Giscard d'Estaing called the exorbitant privilege. This is how the U.S. loses its privilege to conduct war on a stinking credit card. It's changed, though. I'd like to point out that, that both Syria and Iraq, I'm sorry, both Syria and Ukraine have changed the war finance structure. They're being done increasingly... I'm referring to ISIS and Ukraine. They're being funded by narcotics and Langley at the Central Intelligence Agency. I, I get some questions occasionally from people who are not really experienced in finance. They say, what's this Langley you keep talking about? Is that a, is that a hedge fund? Or I get, <clears throat> no, it's the headquarters of the Central Intelligence Agency. Their main business is narcotics. The narcotics is from Afghanistan, where the U.S. maintains a monopoly. Since 2003, when the phony war began, their total tonnage went from about 150 or 200 up to the present day 1,400 tons of heroin per year, valued at between $800 billion and $1.2 trillion a year spread all over Europe and the United States through the NATO Air Force bases. I'm expecting we're going to see Turkey and their Incirlik NATO base and Germany and their Rammstein Air Force base both to shut down. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of controversy. It's going to take a lot of conflict, a lot of threats, a lot of bribery. But, you know, the sad fact of life regarding treasuries and the dollar for the last 10 years is that the New York, and I believe the London and West European banks, have been sustained by narcotics money laundering. If the banks move the narcotics funds, they get to keep 15 to 20% of it. That's sufficient for maintaining solvency. Okay. Well, uh, at, uh, at this time, I, I would uh, like to speak a little bit in my own language for my own uh, 
state people. Uh, I am from the state of Assam. It's a small little corner uh, connected with a bottleneck uh, to state of, I mean, to country of India. And we were never part of India before 1853 when the Act happened and we were dumped to India uh, by the British while they left. Now I'm going to speak in SMEs for about two minutes. Namaskar, Rai Sokal, Apna Loke Khubuni Chhe, Moe Jim Willie Logar Gotha Bati Asu. Jim Willie is the uh, is greatest financial analyst, uh, Aji Moor Logar Gotha Bati Willie Arambho Kori Chhe. E, Moe uh, News Ad Dekhi Asu, uh, Misoliya Modik Utkhat Korak, Bikkhubat Uttal Jantar Montar. Vayankar Rajnoitik Authoritik Potekhud Loar Hunkar uh, Song Bijitar. Aro E Ije News Super Khan Saay Asu, Akhamiya Proti Din, Akhamiya Proti Din Dat In, I can see right in the corner there is an advertisement. Advertisement of Kiko is Bank, Homogro de Kore, Luke A. Juzonar, Odinot, 7.1 Kutitoka, Rakise, Aponi, Baru, Kunu Bektik, Sini Pine, Jar Bank Account Nai, ETI Bank Account Kulo. I'm going to explain this thing in English also so that those people who don't understand SMEs, they will be able to understand what they're uh, putting in an advertisement. So they are starting a new scheme under the Prime Minister uh, right after they came out from uh, Sydney after the G20 summit. They want everybody to have bank accounts so that they could, they could enslave the humanity. So they started creating 7.1 crore which is a 700 million bank account. And they are asking people, if you know anyone who doesn't have a bank account, we will give you 500 rupees, 200 rupees. Come on, open a bank account so that we can you know, we can confiscate your whatever wealth that you have. So now my second question in English, coming back to English, is when I when I look at all around the places, all the markets when they go up, they go up in sync. They go down, they go down in sync. My question to uh, Jim is. Do you think all the markets are rigged? All the places that you have the major financial centers, there is a fat infested trading desk that sits there and do a little bit of work? Uh, clearly, yes. All the major markets are, are rigged, yes. Uh, I'd like to point out that there is a center. Um, it's called the Exchange Stabilization Fund, and it's run by the U.S. Department of Treasury, and the major Wall Street banks follow the directives of the Exchange Stabilization Fund, but it, it's largely Citigroup and J.P. Morgan that, that manage this and carry out the orders. There are a, a, a just many, many different contracts that link, for instance, the dollar to the crude oil price. Notice that as the dollar went up, crude oil price went down. Notice that as the dollar went up, the gold price went down. Notice that as the dollar went up, so did the U.S. stocks. So all these things are tied together, and they have a name for them. They call them forex derivatives. Uh, you know, bank derivatives. There are many types of bank derivatives. You've got things like, uh, you know, bond insurance against a financial corporation and their, their corporate bond for failure. You've also got interest rate derivatives that, that uh, essentially create fabricated demand for the treasury bond using the 0% free money as source. And, and that means to us we're never going to get off the 0% free money because we're never going to remove the need for creating artificial demand for the treasure bond when the whole world is dumping it. But there are lots of other derivatives that link, say, gold to currencies, mainly, mainly the dollar, but not only the dollar. There are lots of different derivatives that, that link the dollar to the crude oil price. Remember a year ago, there, there was a strange phenomenon where the Brent crude oil price started converging and losing that $10 premium, started converging, converging with the West Texas crude oil price. Well, that was a hint that the petrodollar was about to die. 
it wasn't a hint of, well, the markets are merging and isn't this wonderful and I guess we're getting plentiful supply and, and everything is mixing together into a grand fair market pricing pool. No, no, the absolute opposite. <clears throat> we're, we're seeing now the Saudis and the Gulf Emirates. I, I never like to talk about Saudis without including the Gulf Emirates because they all work pretty much together. Um, and, and soon you're going to see Iran working very much together in sync. You're seeing right now the, the Saudis and, and Emirate nations lose their control and tether. The linkage is going away between the dollar and the crude oil price. They're about to announce in Saudi royal backyards that they're going to accept other currencies besides the dollar for crude oil payments. Uh, I don't believe China is, is buying crude oil with dollars. If they are, they're dumping treasuries. So there are lots of different places that the treasuries are you know, being used and discarded and spent, invested, whatever. I don't think the Saudis eventually are going to use dollars when the Saudis say, we don't want any more treasuries. We're trying to get rid of them, so don't give them. Don't pay for our oil in treasuries because we in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, are trying to dump them. We're trying to get back some gold that the United States stole from our Swiss bullion gold bank account. So the Saudis and Emirates are going to be very anxious to replenish their gold with treasuries used as you know, the legal tender. All these markets are tied together. All of them are rigged. And, and the U.S. government makes very little noise, hmm. no publicity at all, about the Exchange Stabilization Fund that came into being shortly after World War II. <clears throat> they realized the dollar is the standard. We need to control enemies of the America, enemies of America who would attack our financial structure. So the origin of the Exchange Stabilization Fund was actually favorable to prevent any foreign attacks against U.S. stocks, U.S. corporate bonds, and U.S. dollar. Back then there was no U.S. government debt. The debt really began with the Vietnam War. So, yes, all markets are rigged. Yes, the Fed-infested debts are all over the place through the Department of Treasury working together with the Exchange Stabilization Fund. There are no more fair markets, period. Yes. There are a lot of things happening nowadays. Uh, as you can see, the Chicago Fed has these windows all, you know, bricked up. Ukrainian gold turned out to be a lead block. Uh, natural, uh, natural gas price is crashing. The Sony, a company from Japan, a foreign company, and <laughs> trying to release a, a, a movie from United States, <laughs> and you know, trying to get a war started. I mean, there are a lot of things happening. Uh, go ahead, feel free to talk something. Some, some of the things about these. What, about, about North Korea and, and the Sony hacking? Yeah. Well, it could be. Um, I, I had an interesting conversation a few weeks ago with a fellow. I call him Kato. He's a very smart fellow. He's a retired Army uh, soldier with the Rangers. Um, he has CIA experience for a couple of years, but he got tired of what he called the psychopaths. In the U.S. military, if someone is uh, ready to be brought on charges of extreme violence against civilians, they don't put, throw them in the brig. They send them to the CIA, where they can put them to good use, assassinating. Now, this fellow told me the North Koreans are the major, number one counterfeiting country in the world for the U.S. dollar. And he said, what, what bill is it? I said, I think it's probably the $100 bill. And by the way, I thought Iran was the number one counterfeiting country. He said, no, no, it's North Korea. And it's the $20 bill. There's lots of monitoring for the 100 So North Korea does, does their counterfeiting in reams and reams for the $20 bill. All right. There might be something going on with the hacking. But 
Uh, it, it could be. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of information of what, what North Korea has been doing regarding hacking. But we hear a lot of stories about Chinese hacking, Iranian hacking, and now North Korean hacking, when I believe 90 to 97 percent of all the hacking that takes place is done by Langley. And Langley has tentacles to the U.S. press, so the story comes out that Iran is doing hacking of U.S. bank accounts, that the Chinese are doing hacking of the Wall Street banks and their bank accounts, and North Korea is doing hacking of various things. When 90 to 97 percent of the hacking is done by Langley. We're getting these threats all over the place to domestic United States. And I think the goal is to create enough mayhem and chaos until martial law is announced. All these hacking, all these, you know, movie theater gunfire incidents, shopping mall <clears throat> gunfire incidents, these are largely done as Langley and FBI projects. And the purpose is to create mayhem Turn in your guns. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. They have taken away my guns. And I can, right now I'm looking at map.ipviking.com. That's the website that shows you everything. The hacks are coming in. And the top notch, I had the attack targets is the United States is running about like 600, 702. And a, uh, you know, where it's coming from? All China. You know, those, those hacking attempts that you are seeing coming from China, you have got a direct connection the, a VPN connection maybe to the China and then fire up uh, on the regular internet showing it the, all the attacks coming from China or those those forest Asian nation and that's what is happening you know uh, I don't know what's going on but that's very possible and very easy to do yes yes so well we did cover a lot of ground today and Anything you want to say about your website, uh, how people can reach you? I already talked about it, but go ahead, sir. Well, I've, I've been in business now for ten and a half years. I'm very pleased. Back in April and May, we had the 10-year anniversary. This is uh, moving along really quite quite well. I've, I'm getting a lot of attention for the correct, what I call, mega forecasts. If people would go to www.goldenjackass.com, you'll see a lot of free material. There's interviews like this that I hope to have a link up for. I used to have a lot more public articles written, free public domain, free domain, open domain articles, but um, I haven't done as many this past two, two or three years because I'm getting more interview inter, uh, requests. And they're, they're more fun, to be honest. But I have links for interviews, link for public articles, and if, if you're new as a listener to the whole rigged market and, and death of the dollar game, if you're suspicious of the propaganda against gold, which is written in the Constitution as the defined money, gold and silver, then start reading more and more and eventually sign up for the newsletter when you've you know, got a little speed going. The newsletter contains two monthly reports every month. One's called the Global Money War Report, and that's the high-level things uh, like the dollar rejection. Russia and China are, are reacting and responding in unison to the sanctions that the U.S. government's putting out, both against Iran and Russia. The sanctions have a response that the whole world is going to abandon the dollar. So. We're not going to isolate Russia. We're going to isolate the United States and send it to the third world because it doesn't have gold sufficient to make a legitimate currency. All right, the other monthly report is called the Golden Currency Report, and I cover a lot of different things there, like, you know, currency wars. And the U.S. recently made a, a formal demand. It wasn't really a request because the Japanese don't have an option. But they've targeted the $1.2 trillion Japanese pension fund, and the U.S. wants it because simultaneous with announcing the, the QE bond purchase program off the printing press was going to end in the United States, <laughs> unlimited QE began in, in Japan. So the timing is perfect. U.S. demanded the trillion-dollar pension fund 
in Japan. And, and proof of it is the falling yen currency, but it's not going to go without consequence. None of these desperate measures go without consequence. So we're going to get an East Asian trade war and a currency war that involves the Chinese yuan, also called the RMB, renminbi, and also it's going to involve South Korean won, the WON, and maybe even the ta Taiwan dollar. Could it even in involve the Singapore dollar, but they don't have quite as much indus industrial output. So a lot of these ground-level things, including mint demand and coin demand, and I frequently cover the Indian situation where they've relaxed recently the, 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 the rules that, that blocked imports of gold, and I'd like to ask uh, you, the host, why doesn't India start uh, capitalizing on, say, the Himalayan foothills and get a gold mining industry going so they can finance their own demand for, for gold, which is absolutely staggering. They've got these 17, oh, I don't know what it is, 17... Thousand tons, twenty thousand tons of gold that's owned by the population, but but India encounters problems for from importing that that affect the the rupee and, and start driving the rupee down from all the imports. Wouldn't it be great if there was a you know a fledgling and, and nascent gold mining industry in India, which would be great for labor, great for gold, great for their currency, and great for their economy? Well, there are. Um I'll, I'll tell you this, India is, uh, is something that uh, the central bankers are getting into it, but they, they haven't got the full control of it, but they surely controls a lot of it. Uh, before even I talk about the gold mining, India has been mining or collecting gold for thousands of years. Everybody has gold, all right? And now, uh, probably you haven't heard about uh, that one temple gave out a couple tons to uh, Central Bank of India and they moved the gold over to England to recast it in an international format. So I don't understand that. So as you can see, there's a clear footprint of Central Western Banker. They still have some kind of lease on Indian Central Banking System. And uh, as far as the gold uh, digging is concerned, I am not a geologist. I do not know much about the Himalayan part of it. So if somebody knows about it, go ahead and, you know, uh, make some discussion about it. So that's, that's all I have to say. I think India could probably produce several thousand tons of gold per year in, in a five-year period if they would just capitalize it and, and get going. And instead, they're, they're, they're caught with importing and, and smuggling. I mean, the, the lines from Dubai to India are mm -hmm. vast yes. for personally carrying. And I, I cover a lot of this with the Golden Currency Report, so I invite people to check out the Golden Jackass, www.goldenjackass.com website, and uh, sign up for the newsletter after checking some of the free material. I, I do frequently cover India. Uh, the India Economic Times is one of the journals that I frequently quote. Um, I don't know if I quoted it this past month, but I know that numerous times I have it. you got some great journals in India. And I, I went to school in my doctoral program for statistics in Carnegie Mellon. I had a couple of Indian colleagues. And when I was working at Digital Equipment Corporation from 1980 to 93, I had some Indian engineer colleagues. And when I worked even at Staples headquarters from 96 to 2000, there were about five or six MBA types uh, who were working as, as business managers and, ac and accounting professionals. We all go out for lunch and have a great time. I imitate my bad Indian accent for English, and we, we just yuck it up and have a great time. <laughs> I don't have uh, many Indian friends right now, but I do have Indian clients, and uh, there's one in particular I call him Euro Raj. Yes, you talk about him. He's a... Uh, He's a Lond an, an ex-London banker. Uh, he's part of my inner circle of uh, trusted colleagues. And Euro Raj is a brilliant fellow. He's got family in India. And uh, he not only knows India, he knows Turkey. He knows Iran. So this is how I try to cover some of these 
other corners of the world that are very important. Iran is extremely important for their reaction to the sanctions by Washington, D.C., and Iran came up with the prototype for oil for, oil for gold trade. India buys Iranian gold by purchasing Turkish gold, and Turkey sources it by whatever means necessary. This is going to be a prototype. Now, Turkey is a very important nation because they're, they're looking east. They're very fed up with the European Union, and Turkey, I think, is going to break away from NATO and cause an enormous problem with that in Cyrillic Air Force Base where the heroin is transported to the western sites from U.S. military bases in Afghanistan. Turkey is, is working now closely with Russia for large energy projects, storage of natural gas and nuclear plants for electricity. I believe uh, Iran, Turkey, and Japan and Germany are the major nations that are going to turn east and turn their back on the United States. So I try to cover a lot of this in the newsletter, and it's, um, it's fascinating. This is very difficult. When I try to operate on a, a simple rule. If the U.S. press or government puts out a story that's related to banks or the economy, 90% chance, 80% chance it's a lie. It's a very simple rule, and it's almost always proved correct by, you know, my, my approach is taken, is, is proved to be correct, assuming it's a lie, because you look for the crime scene, you look for the motive, and you find the fraud. It's very simple sometimes, and I, I just laugh at some of my competitors who have their own newsletters, and they say things like, well, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission is going to come down really hard on J.P. Morgan. And I say, what, are you drunk? <laughs> are, you, are you on Jack Daniels all day or what? Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. You cannot assume markets will be righted. You cannot assume that a problem will be, uh, will be pursued for remedy. You must assume the crime scene continues. And that's what's been happening since Lehman fell. By the way, that was not a bank failure. It was a bank kill job by J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs to prevent Goldman Sachs from having a similar bank failure. Instead, they remained in control, got the full 100 cents per dollar uh, on their, their uh, credit default swaps, and then went into full control of AIG, which got nationalized by the U.S. government. No, whatever gets nationalized by the U.S. government is a crime scene. Fannie Mae was a crime scene. Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, it was to prevent disclosure and evidence coming forward of thefts by President Bush and President Clinton of $1.6 trillion in Fannie Mae thefts. Okay. The big events are crime scenes. 9-11 was a crime scene. I, I just laugh at, at colleagues and friends who, not colleagues, of uh, clients who are new. And I say, are you aware what the largest private bank was in the world in September of 2001? They say no. And I say, it was the World Trade Center. It was a bank robbery. Hundred billion dollars in gold bars, a hundred billion dollars stolen in bearer bonds, and I came to learn later a hundred billion dollars in diamonds. Most Americans don't even know the World Trade Center had the largest bank in the world. Why? Because it's the World Trade Center. It's not a place for tourists. It's a crime scene. Unbelievable things are going on. It's really quite sad and quite pathetic, but the United States has lost control of its country, uh, and it really followed after the majority of their government debt went into foreign hands. I believe China owns the U.S. government corporation and now has full claim on all IRS tax income revenue stream. That's described... Uh, not every single month, but every once in a while I give an update on the government debt default. I believe the United States government debt has already defaulted. 
Another correct forecast. If you go to my website, click on the button for a correct forecast list. It's an astonishing list, if I don't say so myself. And I believe the government debt default is the latest. Why, three or four months ago, did the U.S. Congress announce there's no more formal debt limit on the U.S. government debt? No more debt ceiling. Why? Because we already defaulted. And China owns the J.P. Morgan headquarters building, which is adjacent to the Federal Reserve vaults, connected by a tunnel. I believe China now owns controlling interests of the Federal Reserve. These are covered in the hat trick letter. Very exciting times, and it would be more fun if it weren't a tragedy. Yes. And I try not to cover much at all of, of things like viruses right. and chemtrails. The chemtrails are benzene poison gas and aluminum powder to cause a grand increase in Alzheimer's. So this is what the Agenda 21 Bush, Clinton, Rockefeller, Kissinger gang are all about. We're living in a very... I mean, I'm looking at a Terence McKenna's, uh, you know, time wave zero graph here, and it's going very fast. It is accelerating. I mean, it is going very, very fast. And I'm just uh, about to run out of time, but uh, any last uh, scoop within the last 72 hours that you want to disclose uh, to my friends and families? Um, only that, that we're approaching like an earthquake. I mean, how can you detect the, uh, how can you infer and and, and forecast the timing of an earthquake. You, you look at, at tremors. Yes. It's kind of like the birth pang uh, dilations of a mother. Yes. Uh, they get closer and closer. And we did this in, in my reliability theory work uh, with quality control. The time between events is shortening. The time between major events is getting much closer. So we're approaching some climax events. And a lot of, of uh, time timelines are pointing to end of January, middle of February, end of February, Ides of March. The, the, the Chinese are not going to permit the United States to violate the global agreements, like with the global currency reset. The Chinese are going to slam the table and bring about fair markets again. And any time they bring about fair markets, it means destroyed corrupt markets, which means destroyed all dollar-based markets. So the, the scope is not so much that as, as advice. Get out of your, your bank accounts. Have a minimum amount there to handle your monthly bills. Get out of your stock account. I know that the stock market has gone up. It's because the Federal Reserve is printing money and helping to support the stocks so that the public doesn't become alarmed. Well, sell out. Sell to the Federal Reserve and buy yourself some gold. Reduce your dollar paper exposure. Buy gold, buy silver. And, you know, one of the most interesting questions I get is, what should I buy, gold or silver? What ratios? And I say, buy at least 80% silver. Because central banks don't own any, and industry demands it. Central banks do own gold, and industry does not require much gold. So silver wins on the supply side. Silver wins on the demand side. Silver's going to rise in price between three and five times as much as gold. Buy your silver. Yes, that's what I said in my last question, actually. You know, if you, if you have only 10, let's say you have 330 million people uh, here, and let's say 10 million are working right now, and... If they go out and buy a pack of 20 silver coins and 10 million of them, it's like 600,000 tons. And that's when it ends. Well, yes, except you, you're assuming there, I mean, I don't mean to be critical, but you're assuming that, that if they want to buy the silver coins, they will be able to buy the silver coins. The U.S. Mint halts occasionally the production of, of their mint yes. uh, and, and halts the, the line of output for silver coins. So, you know... If, if everybody goes out and tries to buy silver coins, what it would do is raise the awareness of a default. And the default will, will have an effect on the gold price.
Yes, eventually. But the effect is going to come from Asia, not the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the shutdown of the Comex and the shutdown of the, the London Bullion Market Association, LBMA. That's, a, that's kind of an inventory and a market like the Comex, but in London. I'm looking forward to having them shut down or stop all gold and silver futures contracts. Just stop them all. If you're not going to deliver in gold and silver, you're not a market for gold and silver. They're forcing uh, conversion and redemption in cash. So, you know, these things are going to change and change very rapidly. But there are a lot of things happening in the last uh, couple months, and uh, I, I think we're going to have some flashpoints like uh, a failure of, of the Kiev regime in Ukraine causing more problems. They just announced this week that a bunch of $300,000 worth of gold bars <laughs> are just painted metal bars. <laughs> I mean, the United States stole the 33 tons of gold at the Ukraine Central Bank, and this is what we do. We, we create these wars, and then we steal the gold. We're running out of nations to pilfer their gold, and now we've turned to Japan to steal their pension fund. We're going to alienate all our allies, and we're going to cause the fracture of the European Union. We're going to make them all alienated against the United States. Germany is making their case right now for leaving the euro. All these countries are like Austria, Germany, uh, even France, the, the Dutch. Uh, they're, they're, they're looking to redeem their gold held in New York and London. Why? Because they suspect it's being stolen. These countries in Central Europe are going to fracture away from the European Monetary Union, otherwise known as the Common Euro Currency Union. They're going to break away. Germany, Austria, the Dutch are going to break away, probably Finland as well. Uh, they're going to break away and join Russia and China with the new BRICS gold and silver backed currency. These are very exciting times. The United States is going to be forced to come up with their own gold currency. And if they can't come up with the gold in a legitimate manner that is audited, in, audited independently and proved for its existence, then the United States is going to fall on the third world. Because they're not going to have a legitimate currency that's trusted. It's going to be devalued in the open market. I mean like 30% out of the gate, another 30% in three months. Before you know it, you have 60 to 70 percent devaluation of the new dollar when they lose the global reserve currency status and have to produce and launch a new dollar. They're calling it the treasury dollar. I'm calling it the Scheiss dollar. Scheiss is German for feces. S-H-I-T. The U.S. government is going to launch a Scheiss dollar. It's going to be badly devaluated unless the U.S. can produce the gold and demonstrate it from independent audits. I'd like to see Reuben, Clinton, and Bush forced with the death sentence to return the stolen Fort Knox gold or face a hanging. Well, well thank you, Mr. Jim Willie. Thank you for taking my call. And, uh, you know... <sighs> Thank you. And I'm going to uh, turn off this uh, recording right now and can speak with you for about two minutes. All right, Jim. Thank you for the nice conversation that we had. And I wanted to do it for my children, you know. Uh, when they come, from, come, from, come back from school, they're going to listen to it. And I want to keep it uh, uh, for, for generations. This is, a, this is a history in making. We're, we're seeing history made. I actually joke with my, uh, my contact source called The Voice. Mm-hmm. I say to them, uh, when this newsletter is done and when the gold standard is back and a